Hey, welcome to edX world and another video in the IGCSE economics series. This video is going to be on demand. This is one of the most interesting topics in the microeconomic section, the demand, the supply and later on the equilibrium, the disequilibrium. It is very interesting to understand how the consumers and the producers react to changes in price or any other factors other than price. So let's begin this video. In this video, we are primarily going to focus on the meaning of demand, the meaning of individual demand and market demand, the meaning of demand schedule and demand curve. After that, we would understand the factors affecting the demand for a product, understand the law of demand, and then understand movement along the demand curve, which is extension of demand and contraction of demand, and a shift in the entire demand curve, which is increase in demand and decrease in demand. So make sure you watch the video till the end to get complete clarity on the demand concepts. So what do you mean by demand? So demand is the willingness and ability of a consumer to buy certain goods and services at different price levels. There are two important terms here, willingness and ability. Willingness is the desire to buy a product. But if that desire or the willingness is not backed up by the ability to purchase the product, then it is not an effective demand. So for a demand to be considered as effective demand, the consumer should be willing to buy the product and also he should be able to buy the product in terms of the income he earns. The product should be affordable for the consumer and then only the consumer will be able to buy the product and hence both willingness and ability is important for an effective demand. Next important term is quantity demanded. Students do get confused here. They feel that the term demand and the quantity demanded is the same but it's not the same. Quantity demanded refers to the quantity of goods and services a consumer is willing and able to buy at only one price point, at a single price. But demand refers to the various quantities of a good and service the consumer wants to buy at different price levels. In the next slide, when I go, I'll, may, I'll again explain you the difference between the demand and the quantity demanded using an example. The Individual demand of consumers, when you sum them up, you will get the market demand for consumer. For example, there may be numerous consumers in, a, in an economy that would demand for furniture. If we add the demand of all the consumers in the economy, we would get the market demand for furniture. The demand schedule is the tabular presentation of what the consumer is willing to buy and able to buy at different prices. And the demand curve is the graphical presentation of the same data. So. It is the graphical presentation of the consumer's willingness and ability to buy different quantities of products at different prices. So here we have a demand schedule. The prices on the left side and the gadgets demanded per year for different prices on the right side. If you talk about the entire demand schedule, this is the demand of the consumer. But if you talk about just one price point, for example, at a price of 1500, the quantity demanded is 1500. But if I, if you talk about the various price levels and the con and the relative quantities, then you can call that this is the consumer's demand for gadgets per year. Now let's plot these points or let pl let's plot this data on a graph to arrive at the demand curve. So when you are drawing the graph on the y axis, we will have the price of the product here in this case price of the gadgets in dollars per unit and on the x-axis we have gadgets demanded per year in terms of thousands per unit so price is always on the y-axis quantity is always on the x-axis and on top of the graph we have the label for the graph what is this graph about this is consumers demand for gadgets per year on the y-axis we've plotted the pr price points and on the x-axis we have the quantities in terms of 1000 units so 1000, 2000 and so on until 10,000 gadgets per year. So our first data in the table is at a price of $1500 the gadgets demanded is $1500 so from the y-axis 1500 price we will, ha we will have to mark on the x-axis 1500 gadgets demanded per year so our first point would be here, the point shown by the dot here. In the same way, when we plot all the points, all the price points and the related quantities on the graph, we would get various points. And when these points are joined using a curve, 
this is when we get a demand curve so this is known as the demand curve so i hope you've understood the process of plotting the points on the demand curve next let's understand the factors that affect the demand for a product the first and most important factor is the price of the product itself when the price changes the consumers change the way they purchase and consume a product so when uh, when the price of a product falls the product becomes cheaper we as consumers buy more of that product and when the price of the product rises it increases it becomes expensive we as consumers tend to buy less of that product which is very obvious because we as consumers tend to buy products that are cheaper and we tend not to buy products that are expensive compared to the other products the second factor that affects the demand for a product is the price and availability of related goods now related goods can be either substitutes of a product or the complements of a product substitutes are products that can be used in place of the good that we have in hand whereas complements are products that have to be used along with the product or the good that we have in hand for example substitutes laptops and desktops are substitutes you would either use a laptop or you would use a desktop same way you would either drink a tea or you would drink a coffee whereas complements printers and toner cartridges are complements when you buy a printer you definitely need a toner cartridge and tea and sugar when you're having tea you need to buy sugar the next question arises how does a change in the prices of substitutes and complements affect our good in hand for example let's talk about demand for laptops when the price of desktop rises as consumers would you buy more of laptops or less of laptops obviously more of laptops so the general rule is when the price of substitute rises we would buy more of the good in hand whereas if the price of substitute falls we would buy less of the product or the good in hand in case of complements it is the opposite if a complement product becomes cheaper if the price of a complement product falls we tend to buy more of the product in hand so that we can also buy the product that has now become cheaper whereas if the price of the complement product rises we tend to buy less of the product that we have in hand next important factor is the disposable income of the consumer the disposable income is made up of the gross income of the consumer and the taxes the income tax charged by the government so when the gross income rises obviously the disposable income also rises and vice versa whereas if the tax rises the disposable income falls because tax has to be paid from the gross income and after the tax is paid we are left with the disposable income the disposable income is what the consumer eventually spends on the purchase and consumption of goods and services so if the disposable income falls the consumer would demand less for goods and services and if the disposable income rises the consumer would demand more for goods and services now using the same logic if the gross income of a consumer rises consumer would buy more of a product if the gross income of the consumer falls he would buy less of a product whereas it's the opposite for tax if the tax rises if the government charges higher tax rates the consumer would buy less of the goods and services whereas if the tax rates fall if the income tax to be paid reduces the consumer would buy more of the product because now he can buy he can afford to buy more quantities of goods and services the next factor is the habits taste and fashion so if there is a favorable change in the habit taste or fashion we tend to buy more of a product for example if a product has become more fashionable if it is trending we tend to buy more of it if we develop a better taste for a product we would tend to buy more of it whereas if the there's an unfavorable change in the habits taste or fashion for a product we would buy less of that good or service and then there can be other factors that are specific to different goods and services so depends on how the factors change and accordingly there can be either an increase in demand or a decrease in demand next we have to understand the law of demand the law of demand states that all other things being equal so this is the first part of the definition of law of demand which is very important but we'll come to this part later let's understand the second part the second part says that the as the price of the good increases the quantity demanded decreases i just told you in the previous slide as the price of a product rises we tend to buy less of that product because that product has become expensive and as the price of a good decreases it becomes cheaper the quantity demanded increases which is the general consumer behavior recollecting the factors that i told you affect the demand of a product 
we have the price of the product which I've marked in red and we have the other factors factors other than price which are marked in white. So when the law of demand definition states that all other things being equal, it is referring to all factors other than price. So a very important assumption when understanding the law of demand is that all factors other than the price, the ones that are marked in white are constant, they do not change. Then only this law of demand will be applicable. So I've picked up the demand curve from the previous slide where we had plotted the points and arrived at the demand curve for gadgets per year. If you realize as the price is falling, the quantity demanded is increasing. For example, when the price was 1,500, the quantity demanded was 1,500 gadgets per year. But when the price fell to $1,250 per unit, the quantity demanded of gadgets rose and so on. Ultimately, when the prices were $250 per unit, per unit for the gadgets, the quantity demanded by consumers was 10,000. So this demand curve is actually confirming the law of demand. But remember one very important assumption, all other factors should remain constant. They cannot change for the law of demand to apply. Related to the law of demand, we also have to understand the movement along the demand curve. So when the price of a product changes, the quantity demanded of the product will obviously change. So that change can be either in form of extension of demand or contraction of demand. So let us first understand the extension of demand using a graph. Assuming that the consumers are currently buying 5,000 gadgets per year at a price of $750, then in the gadgets market, the prices fell to $500 per unit. So obviously the consumers are now going to consume higher quantity of gadgets per year and they are now consuming 7,500 gadgets per year. This movement from 5,000 to 7,500 is known as extension of demand. So a very simple definition of extension of demand is that as the price of the product falls, the quantity demanded rises. So that's extension of demand. Again, assuming all other factors other than price are constant. Understanding contraction of demand. So let's say currently the price in the market is $500 and consumers are consuming 7,500 gadgets per year. The prices rose to $1,000 per unit and as a result the consumers reduced the quantity they wanted to consume of the gadgets and they are now consuming only 3,000 gadgets per year. So this is known as the contraction of demand. Contraction of demand, a simple definition is when the price of the product rises, the quantity demanded by consumers fall. That's contraction of demand. By now you must have realized that extension of demand or the contraction of demand is only a movement along the demand curve. The demand curve does not change. The consumer is moving on the existing demand curve, which is very important because in the next concept, we are going to see how the demand curve will change. The entire demand curve will change. But when it comes to the extension and contraction of demand, the consumer is moving on the existing demand curve. And I will repeat it again. The extension or contraction of demand is happening only due to changes in price of the product. All factors other than price are still constant here. So here we have situation where the entire demand curve will change. But for that to happen, the factors other than price will have to change. So when that happens, the demand curve will change and there could be either an increase in demand or a decrease in demand. I list down the factors again that we've seen earlier. So for change in demand, our price is constant and factors other than price have changed. So let us see the increase in demand and decrease in demand on the graph. So we have our example here. So let's say currently the consumers are consuming 5,000 gadgets per year at a price of $750. And I'll take an example where the income of the consumer has risen. What will be the effect in the market? Obviously now the consumer would be willing to buy more gadgets at the same price. Now the gadgets are more affordable for the consumer, disposable income is rising. So the consumer now demands 8,000 gadgets at the same price of $750. And this would happen at all price points. At all price points, now the consumer would be willing to buy more quantities of gadgets compared to what the consumer was willing and able to buy earlier. So what we actually get is a new demand curve that is on the right of the existing demand curve. This is known as an increase in demand. So when the demand curve changes and shifts to the right, that is known as an increase in demand. And it happens 
not due to change in price of the product but due to change in factors other than price of the product in the same way we can have we can also understand decrease in demand let's say the currently consumer is consuming 7000 gadgets per year at a price of 750 dollars the government has increased the income tax rate and as a result the disposable income of consumer has fallen now at the same price 750 dollars consumers will not be willing to buy 7000 gadgets but they will be willing to buy lower number of gadgets let's say 4000 gadgets and this would also be applicable for all price points now at each price level consumers would be willing to buy lesser gadgets compared to what they were willing and able to buy earlier so what we actually get is a new demand curve to the left of the existing demand curve so and this is known as the decrease in demand so when the demand curve shifts to the left of the existing demand curve that situation is known as decrease in demand and it happens not due to change in price of the product but due to changes in factors other than price of the product so this was understanding increase and decrease in demand using a demand curve or using a graph let us look at a list of all the factors that could lead to an increase or decrease in demand extension or contraction there is just one way that that it can happen extension can happen due to fall in price contraction can happen due to rise in price but increase in demand can happen due to various reasons first one increase in the price of substitute if a substitute product is now expensive we would prefer to buy more of the current product or more of the good in hand in the same way when the price of a complement falls in order to consume more of the complement product we will also have to consume more of the good in hand and obviously increase in income levels i've already given you an example there would be an increase in demand decrease in income tax rates will also lead to increase in disposable income so increase in demand a favorable change in taste habits and passion would lead to consumers demanding for more quantities of the product at the same prices or if there is a positive advertisement by the private producers or by the government for a product the consumers will start getting influenced and consume more of the product even though there is no change in the price of the product and there can be other factors that are specific to the product in the same way we can have factors that cause a decrease in demand a decrease in price of a substitute product would make us consume less the of the good that we have in hand and more of the substitute product increase in price of a complement product will make us consume less of the complement product and also the current product or good in hand decrease in income levels and increase in income tax rates would lead to fall in disposable income so fall in consumption unfavorable change in taste habits and fashion for example a product which was earlier trending now it's not in trend obviously we would decrease our consumption even though price is not changed and a negative advertisement by the government for example government has put up a negative advertisement against consuming tobacco people might get influenced and reduce their consumption of tobacco even though the price has not changed of the tobacco and again there can be other factors that affect or that cause a decrease in demand so i hope this video was useful i hope you have understood all the concepts related to demand if you enjoyed the video please like the video please share the video with your friends make sure you subscribe to the channel next i'm going to come up with supply i'm also going to come up with the equilibrium and the disequilibrium in the market and then all of this will make more sense i'll see you soon in a new video